Hi everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really sweet little treat boxes. You can use these, you know, for any theme, any occasion. I've done these for Halloween, but they'd look great in Christmas papers, birthday papers, you know, anything. So these ones here hold one Tunnex tea cake. So these are going to be... <laughs> I just thought I had to do a little box for a Tunnex tea cake. It's so sweet. Um, these ones here, I need to buy some more Tunnex tea cakes to go in, so I haven't put the ribbons on yet. But that's how they look with the bow. Trick or treat. And then when you take the bow off, they open up. And it's just a really nice little box. They measure 2 and 1 8 by 2 and 1 8 by 1 and a half. So it's a really nice size. It will fit lots of other things in. They would, you know, look great with some string hanging. You could actually hang them on the tree and then nice little favours at the table and things like that. But I just thought, trick or treat, perfect. So these are using the free downloadable papers from Trimcraft. Every month they do free downloads. So this time, I never buy Halloween paper packs or papers, and um, you can always find someone doing free downloads. So this is what you get. So you get these ones here with the eyes on. This is the top sheet here, and on this one it has, it's spooky season which I cut out and now it's obviously gone on too because there is another project coming with that. So anyway, you'll see that one later. Then you get this one here with the ghosts. That's a really cool one. So it's great for parties. You know, someone's got a birthday at Halloween, you know, parties going on around that time. You can make some really nice things. You've got that one there. This one, I just, I printed it in black and white just to see how it looks. There we go. That's the It's Spooky Season. So that's the other one that you get. And then you've got this one here. I thought was really good and then you've got this one but I printed these when my coloured ink was just going and I'd also printed them as well but then when I put the new ink in you can see how rich this orange is and against the the other orange there so that is you know they are lovely downloads so just make sure that you've got the you know a good amount of ink in there so I'm just going to push these ones all out of the way really really quick really easy to make Okay, so this is all you need. I, you can get two of these boxes out of one piece of A4. All right, so some very quick, easy scoring. So make sure you've got, if, well, yeah, if your paper's directional, make sure it's the right way up. Okay, so you're gonna score at one and a half, three and five eighths, five and one eighth, and seven and a quarter. That'll leave you with a half inch tab. Then rotate along the short side, and you're gonna score again at one and a half, and at three and five eighths, okay? Keep the scoreboard out for a minute. I'm going to work on my scoreboard because you do need to add in a couple of score lines. Now you want to fold and burnish. And then you've got that half inch piece here on the right hand side. So along the bottom you've got that base score line. You want to cut up all of your score lines to that first line. Okay. Now with the larger pieces, so this one here, these smaller squares are your tabs to go inside. So what I would say is cut away the score line on this piece. So I've got all the score line on this one and all the score line on this one. So this next one here, I'm gonna cut slightly to more to the right hand side. So I'm removing the score line from this piece and it's all on here. So now if I bring that up, you can see I've got all score line here and here, but these ones are really clean. Okay, because we're going to be cutting some wedges off of that and then you end up removing it all. You don't want any of that on these pieces so you get a nice kind of clean closure. Then you'll have this piece left here. Just bring it around so you've got that half inch piece facing you and just take a wedge off of the middle piece so you, you get that finish. Again, just going to take a wedge off that one and then that whole piece will come away and you can just cut down. And then that brings you along this side and you want to do the same thing. So this is the large se um, section. So I'm cutting more to the left of the score line. So again, all of that is on this piece. And then on this one, I'm cutting more to the right. Not too much. You're literally still on that score line, but you're, you're leaving a lot of it on there. And then that last one, I'm cutting more to the left. Okay. Then just do this last bit of scoring, then we can get rid of the scoreboard. So you want the flat end at the top of the short side so you've got your tab facing the bottom here and you just want to fold under the two small squares so you're left with the larger sections okay and then you're going to score at four and three eighths so put your stylus in the track bring it down at four and three eighths and keep it down so you're scoring through these two and these are what are going to make the folds for 
the top here. Now, if you want, flip it over and do it, because then that'll be the correct direction of the score line. So I've got a very thick 300 GSM cardstock here. And also a lot of people ask me how I print on such thick cardstock. I just feed the cardstock through one at a time. So I printed off, what was it, two, four, six, eight, ten pieces of this. But each one I just, you know, kind of watched it, just do the last of the one before and then I put it in and it would catch it and then it printed it. And that way you never get any of your paper jamming or your cardstock jamming. If you layer all your cardstock in there, I mean, I've got a nice printer, it's the Canon one, it's inexpensive, it's on my Amazon storefront, but it will grab more than the one and that's when you sometimes then will get, you know, run the risk of jamming. So just feed them through one at a time, I've never had a problem with it at all, so... Okay, so now if you want to put your holes in, you can punch one and then you can line it up with a, and draw a pencil, but I actually do them right at the end. So it's entirely up to you, but I'll show you the way I do mine. So now I'm just going to grab my glue and just cover that tab. Okay, fold that one in half and then fold the other one in half and they will marry up perfectly. Okay. And then what's going to happen is the top here is the one with the folded pieces. These pieces will go in. Actually, I forgot to say, you want to take your wedges off, and I totally forgot. So those of you that are used to doing your boxes anyway, but if you now put it on the side, you're going to cut into the short pieces just down to each corner. Just remove the score lines so you've got a little triangle there. And it just means you just they just fold in nice and neat. So again, on this side here, see I get ahead of myself, and then this one here. All right, and do the same with the bottom ones. You're not cutting the long ones, you're just cutting those pieces on the side. Okay, so now you can put the top in with the fold there, fold the two sides in, and then these two will come together like this. Okay, I've done very similar boxes to these in the past. They are handy little ones, so I've got some different sizes. I'll put the gift box playlist up here, actually. So for the front, I always have where I've joined it, I have that at the back, so that's my joins, that's going to be there. So this is the front. I'm going to fold the back one in. I'm then going to add glue. I'm not adding a lot, it's only going to hold a little tea cake. That one, we can stick it down better in a minute. Put glue all on that. Fold that one down. Glue all on that side. And then that one. Turn it back up again, open it all up and you can go in and just make sure the glue spread out. Okay, and then fold those back in again, and then there is your little box. So now to do the hole punch, so I'm just going to line them up, and then punch it. It's up to you where you want to do it. I've come in about half an inch from the right-hand side there, and just line it up in the centre, and then keep that hole all lined up, and just move along, and again, come in about half an inch. I'm not being too precious, because, again, these are just going to be thrown away so quickly. As long as the you know they're they're kind of there, like that's okay. And once the ribbon goes on it, you won't even notice anyway. So then I've got my little trick or treat here, which I cut out with my two inch. What did I use? My two inch, yeah, my two inch circle punch. Okay, so just added some little foam dots to the back. These are very very similar to the ones that I made with that kit, that um, paper mania kit when I went away with my girlfriends and made those little treats, there was little boxes like this in there because they fit a Tunnix tea cake in perfectly. But I thought oh, I'll make one from scratch, so there. And then I've got some black ribbon here. Thread it through from the back. You can make them into a little gift bag as well. You could have this as more of a handle rather than a bow. That would look quite sweet. And then just tie it in a nice bow. And you keep asking for a bow tutorial and I keep forgetting, I'm so sorry. Every time I go and do a bow I remember and then I forget once I come off. Okay, and then I always like to just close off the ends there of my ribbon very carefully. And keep it nice and straight. This ribbon's a very cheap ribbon so it catches extremely fast when I use my, more, my nice fabric ones but that's okay, just gotta go easy with it. There we go. Okay, so there's my 10 
treat boxes. Really quick, really easy to do, all to hold one tonix tea cake, but you can easily put anything in there. And as I mentioned, you could have these any theme that you want, but they do look really sweet. I actually forgot to put that in this box, so I'll undo the bow in a moment. And um, yeah, I need to buy some more and not eat them because I need to fill these ones up. And then once those bows are sealed, I won't be going in them anymore. But hope you like it, hope it's inspired you. Please give me a thumbs up if it has and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank you.